Steph. We are two weeks into hurricane season, and while the spring severe has ended, the threat for tornadoes never really does. And unlike hurricanes, which are classified in real time, tornadoes get their rating after the fact. Right, Jim? No question about that. Tornadoes, by the way, you know they are one of the most feared and destructive forces on the planet, capable of producing catastrophic damage in a matter of seconds. And it's that trail of destruction that's used to determine the tornado's rating. It's called the Enhanced Fujita, or the EF scale. Today, some of the ingredients are actually coming together for some big storms. Let's take a look outside. Oh yeah, I mean, trouble's already brewing here. We've just had a tornado warning, you hear the siren? We've just had a tornado warning issued for this cell. This is the time that you and your family need to get to your safe place to ride out the storm. Wow, take a look at this storm, it's incredible. Great looking structure here, guys. We've got rotation going on at the base here. All right, a lowering of that base. We call this a supercell, by the way. A rotating thunderstorm is a supercell. Not all of them produce tornadoes, but this one's got a chance. We're watching this base, it's lowering. Almost looks like there's a funnel starting to appear from the wall cloud. Yes, there it is. Do we have debris on the ground? Yes, we do. There's a debris cloud, a connection. Now you have a tornado on the ground, a tornado on the ground at this time. When tornadoes form, they're not usually that wide, okay? Just like this one. But it's important to point out that size doesn't always equate to the intensity. Today, there's a mobile Doppler radar actually feeding back real-time wind speeds. And I, and I'm being told that those wind speeds are approaching about 85 miles per hour. So that's likely going to be an EF0. All right, EF0 damage here is tree branches thrown around, some roof shingles peeled back. But hold on, let's look at this tornado. It's going from more of a rope now to a much thicker tornado, much wider tornado. It looks more like a stovepipe now. It's called a stovepipe because it resembles one. This could produce EF1 damage, potentially. All right, 86 to 110 mile per hour winds here. Mobile homes now can be flipped or rolled, roofs severely damaged here, and there can be extensive power outages. Jeez, that was close. Look it, when you've got a tornado like this, power lines are gonna fall, sometimes like dominoes, just like you see here. You gotta stay clear of these, even if they don't appear to be live. They're still extremely dangerous. The ground may be energized around the pole, all right? Stand at least 40 feet away. And frankly, if you're standing where I am, you're way too close, way too close. All right, that was intense. Let's keep looking at this tornado because it's still moving toward us. And from what I'm hearing from the Doppler on wheels, it is still intensifying. They're getting winds now 111 to 135 miles per hour. So this is likely an EF2, all right, if they can find the damage that, equal to that, that is equal to that. Winds are now strong enough to not just roll a mobile home, but completely destroy it. Tear off complete roofs and send debris through the air like a missile. Jeez, how are you gonna get out of the way of that thing? This is exactly why we need you away from all the exterior walls, because debris flying through the air like that leads to so many injuries and deaths in tornadoes. We're still under a tornado warning. The twister is now more than likely producing EF3 damage. Doppler winds exceed 150 miles per hour. This tornado is capable of severely damaging large structures and destroying well-constructed homes. Like this one that we brought into the studio. Roof's gone, the only thing left in this house are a few interior rooms, all right? The safest place in this house is the central bathroom. This is the lowest level that you should be in if you don't have a shelter that is below ground. Put as many walls between you and the outside that you can. And remember, when you go to take cover, grab a helmet, grab a sturdy pair of shoes, because you have to walk outside after the tornado, and that presents all kinds of new hazards. Clearly, an EF3 is life-threatening. Thank goodness less than 1% of all tornadoes in the U.S. are classified higher. The problem is, that's exactly what we're seeing here. The mobile Doppler radar now detecting winds in excess of 180 miles per hour. That is likely EF4 damage. I mean, look at the funnel. You can't even see it from edge to edge. This type of tornado is pulverizing everything in its path. Huge, heavy objects thrown into the air and carried several hundred feet. Oh, jeez, you got to be kidding me. Look at this, this beat up 3,000 pound car. It was lofted by the tornado and tossed around like that piece of wood that we saw earlier. It could have come from a mile away. It's mangled, we got gasoline leaking out. That's even creating more hazards. You know, it's not unusual for tornadoes to displace large objects. In the past, a bus was carried a half a mile, a mattress some 40 miles, and paper lofted and carried over 200 miles from its original starting place. Surely this tornado is lofting objects up 
and centrifuging them out. It means business, and believe it or not, it is actually getting stronger. Look at how massive this thing is. This is called a wedge tornado because it is wider than it is tall. They can be more than a mile across, sometimes even more than two miles across. Imagine that thing coming at you with 200 mile per hour winds. This is a deadly EF5. Lights, yeah, they're starting to flicker now. We're about to get hit. This is as bad as it gets. I'm grabbing my helmet and I'm taking shelter now. Currently in our area, 74 degrees under fair skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 93. Tonight, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Low, 74. Thursday, mixed clouds and sun with scattered thunderstorms. High, 87. Chance of rain, 50%. Here's our seven day outlook. Absolutely unbelievable. This, when you walk outside and you see something like this, it looks like a movie set. It's not. This is what happens after a massive tornado moves through. It is a sea of destruction. Everything unrecognizable. Have no idea where the shopping cart came from. You see cars here that are completely flipped and mangled to the point where they've even been stripped from their paint in some cases. Just an absolute sea of destruction here. Even the ground. Look at that. There, there are no roads here. I have no idea what street that I'm on right now. Unrecognizable. You can smell gas. we got fires burning. The hazardous situation is made worse, obviously, when you walk outside and you see all this and you don't realize it. You've got debris still scattered all over the ground. Remember that when you're getting out of your shelter. Make sure you've got those sturdy shoes. There's nails. There's glass. Two by fours that are upended with the nails sticking out of them here. This is why we want you to wear a helmet when you go into your storm shelter, because it's not a guarantee you're making it out of here. This is classic EF5 damage, all right? People's lives here are going to be changed forever. And although rare, these types of tornadoes and this type of destruction are a reality for this country. Think back not too far away. I mean, Moore, Oklahoma, Joplin, Missouri, Tuscaloosa with the strong EF4. Complete towns can be wiped off the map, like Greensburg, Kansas was back in May of 2007. No one is Amer in America is safe from the threat of a tornado, even in the wintertime. You need to have a plan that's communicated with your family and enacted upon once you're under a tornado warning. You won't know the EF rating until the damage is done. So be prepared for any tornado, no matter the size or the EF rating. Steph. Pretty remarkable. I think it's really a good way to show people exactly what could happen, of course, with the worst situations. But the rebuilding process does take a lot longer, unfortunately, than what we saw in the studio. Let's bring in Jim to talk more about this simulation here. And Jim, I think that it's important that a lot of people don't maybe rem understand that tornadoes grow and shrink in size yeah. as they're on the ground. And we just rate it at its biggest strength. We rate, yeah. So you look along the path, let's say it's a mile wide, somewhere or a mile long, somewhere within that mile, there's going to be an EF3, EF4, EF5 rating. There will be weaker strengths typically on the front end or the back end of that. Yeah, when it's developing, you right. know, type of a thing. Right. So let's talk about tornado warnings. Could we, those sirens are so eerie in person I and mean, they were eerie enough on there but in person they're you know next oh, yeah. level the, the warnings are actually getting longer and longer we're getting better with these warnings we are getting better with these warnings 13 minutes 14 minutes 15 minutes um, you know 
I think the longer the lead time you have to, to get your family ready, especially if you already have a plan, right. that's not the time, even with 13, 14, 15 minutes, that's not the time to be making the plan. You right. know where everybody needs to go, meet up, grab the cell phone, grab the shoes, the helmet, and you're in place to ride it out. So let's talk about rebuilding because, you know, you mentioned several different cities in there. It, this is not, you know, great, our studio can just come back like that. Of this course. takes five to ten years for a lot of these places. Yeah, Greensburg, Kansas, uh, you know, they came back as, as a green town, as we yeah. all know about. Joplin is still rebuilding. All right, you know, we, we continue to see certainly improvement there. But it's a horrible situation. People, yeah. when they hear a tornado siren and when they see a tornado warning, they're still, it brings them back to that day. And that, you know that what? Awful I, day. So many people are amazed by tornado damage because it's like, well, my side of the street was totally fine. The other side of the street was flattened. Right, yeah. And, and that's another aspect of the tornado. Either they can hop around, but there's got to be an edge to the tornado as well. And it's pretty, uh, you know, solid demarcation. A lot of times with these stronger tornadoes, you, you will have mini tornadoes, all right, or suction vortices that rotate around that main funnel. And like you said, okay, your house gets hammered, the other one doesn't. It's because more than likely you've dealt with one yeah. of those those vortices, but you know, it, it is like walking out to a movie set. Yeah. You and I have both been there after destructive tornadoes. It's hard to imagine. And you, it just takes your breath away. Str trees completely stripped of their bark. In, in their branches. It's, a, it's an incredible sight. So, you know, severe season is on the wane right now, right. but, you know, Jen, hurricanes, we've had some hurricanes that have pumped out hundreds of tornadoes. No, you go back to, to 2004, and Hurricane Ivan, right? That was the most prolific um, tornado producing hurricane. But yeah, the month of June is really a transition season. We, we still get tornadoes, actually still one of the peak months of the year. And when you look at where in June, it's a little bit farther north. It's not the traditional tornado alley that you think down here from Oklahoma into Texas into Dixie Alley in the southeast. Because the jet stream energy moves farther to the north, typically during June, we see that greatest risk area get farther north into Nebraska, into Iowa. And when we look back at the month of June and some of the most intense tornadoes of that F5 or EF5 intensity, you find them further north. So these are the June tornadoes that have been that strong. The deadliest of them was in Michigan on June 8th in 1953 when there was 116 deaths. And certainly warnings weren't the way they are today. Right now we have, what, an average of a 13-minute lead time for tornadoes. It's plenty of time to get into your safe shelter. We know of these strong tornadoes, though, you know, F5, EF5, you've got to be in a shelter. You've got to be underground to survive this kind of a tornado or in a storm shelter. Now, here's what you do when a warning is issued. You go to your shelter, um, and if you don't have a basement, that's obviously the first choice, or a you know a, a storm shelter. If you don't have that, your interior room. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible, and uh, Steph, stay away from windows, of course. Well, proof that snow shovels can come in handy, even in spring. But is this snow or something else? The answer is coming up on AMHQ. Uh, let's now go to Jen. All right, we've got a freaky fast look at today's weather for you and more rain in Texas. Some of that very heavy, especially in South Texas this morning. It's going to be on the move And Houston. I think today's the day we do get our batch of rain coming on in. Then up to the Midwest and Ohio Valley, we got thunderstorms coming in here. Possible severe weather and hot and humid and steamy in the mid-Atlantic. We'll be right back after this. This quick bite brought to you by Jimmy John's. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's, where fresh and fast meet. Freak alert, Jalen. Not like.